So I came across a video recently of this guy called John Lin demonstrating his voxel game slash engine and I thought what the frick are voxels? I've heard the word many times before but I never convinced myself to spend one precious minute of my life googling it. But if you've seen my videos before you know that this is the exact kind of thing that activates my neurons so of course it immediately got me interested. The game is bright colorful, dynamic, but there's obviously something a little odd about the way it looks, right? That is because it uses a completely different approach to making games than we're used to in like 99.9% .9 of games. So before I get into voxels, let's talk about that 99.9% .9 and w what is their deal? I know you're a smarty little smart smart pants, so you probably know that most games today use polygons, which are just a few dots connected to each other in straight lines. During the modeling phase that you do in your 3D software, you can use multiple point polygons like quads but it all eventually gets converted into triangles because that is what current GPUs are optimized to handle. Triangles are the simplest polygons that any other polygon can be divided into. So basically everything you see in any game is made up of lots and lots of tiny triangles. Why? Well, they're dummy simple. And simple equals efficient. You'll notice that this is the overarching theme of this video, efficiency. Whenever you're wondering why something in game development is done in one way rather than another, the answer is probably efficiency. Triangles are by far the easiest shape to compute. Three dots connected are always in a single plane and always form a flat surface no matter how you move the individual points, whereas four or more dots could form all kinds of three-dimensional crazy wacko shapes. So the collection of 2D triangles that form a 3D model need to be projected onto a 2D surface which is your screen. Are you following this? The math necessary to project a triangle is very straightforward and requires the least amount of processing power. Even grouping together tons of tiny triangles to form the illusion of a curved surface is easier for the computer to compute than an actual curve. Isn't that wild? So when you think about it, all of this is just a lie. Everything in gaming is made to give you some kind of illusion. Whether it's to think that you're looking at actual curves, or interacting with a 3D world, or that you have something to show for the years of your life spent on games, it's all a big fat lie. And there you are, like a little obedient sheep eating all of it up. No, but we all know it's an illusion and we all enjoy it. If anything, it's so impressive what creative tricks some brilliant people thought up over the last few decades to give us these experiences. But voxels are at least somewhat less of a lie than polygons. In theory, they're closer to real world simulation. I can never fucking say real world. I always have to do the take 20 fucking times real world simulation. Your camera clips through a polygon object and your illusion is shattered. You see that there's nothing underneath. People are empty, buildings are empty, it's all just a facade. So what are voxels and how are they different? I looked it up on YouTube and it turns out there isn't a single video on it that's not a fucking scientific dissertation that my ooh, ooh, ah, 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 brain can understand, which is surprising considering how astonishingly simple it is. Voxel stands for volumetric pixel, and it's essentially a 3D pixel. So imagine a little square on your monitor representing a single pixel. A voxel is just that, but in 3D, so a little cube. This is not exactly correct, but it's the easiest way to visualize it. When you carve out a piece of land built with voxels, you see the land that was underneath. Objects have actual volume because they're made of tiny points in 3D space. This is why I said it's closer to reality where things are also made up of tiny elements like atoms and molecules and billions, billions and billions, billions of dust, dust particles and shit. This makes voxel graphics great for stuff like terrain, which is what it was mostly used for in the 90s. The crowning achievement probably being the 1999 game called Outcast. But unfortunately, voxels have barely evolved since. Why? 
Well, graphics cards happen, and they created a sort of magic circle type deal. GPUs are designed to render triangles because triangles dummy simple. And because GPUs are designed to render triangles, that's what people choose to work with. Voxels that required CPU power to be rendered couldn't catch up with polygon graphics quality and simply got left behind. They do have their applications outside of games, but I'm barely managing to wrap my head around the games part, so I'll, I'll just skip those. The main advantages of using them in games is procedural generation and destructibility. However, they kind of suck in graphic resolution and performance. So if you're gonna sacrifice these to make a voxel based game, it should probably have like terrain molding adding and removing chunks as a central part of the gameplay. Minecraft is often described as one such game, but even though it stores the map as a voxel grid, the game is in fact rendered using polygons. The only notable voxel-based game in recent memory is Teardown, which you probably heard of, it's kind of popping on YouTube right now. You can probably guess what type of game it is based on the title, but even though DESTROY EVERYTHING sounds great, I'm more interested in destroy everything but it's pretty and colorful, aka John Lin's game. Yes, this is in fact not only a tech demo, but an actual game that he's working on alongside the engine that he's developing. It hasn't been officially revealed yet, but he does refer to it as something that we'll eventually get to play. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know the technicals, but based on his video descriptions, which you should go and read, it seems like he's making breakthroughs in the level of detail, physics, rendering speed, and other departments, which is potentially good news for artists interested in voxels. Voxels are not used today because there aren't really any adequate full-fledged tools that are functional and efficient. Now, will they ever reach the efficiency of polygons? Uh, no, probably not. People developing these are mostly passionate individuals or very small teams, and polygons are just so far ahead with all the industry giants invested heavily in those. It just wouldn't make sense to put tons of money and training into something with objective drawbacks compared to what's currently being used. If you remember the Unreal Engine 5 reveal from the PS5 event last year, they talked about how many billions and billions of triangles were being rendered, and that's impressive. In fact, it's freaking impressive. Doesn't mean that one method is better than the other, but let's be real, it kinda does. That being said, it is possible that a game like John Lin's blows up. I mean, people are obviously saying it's the new Minecraft for a reason. It's a dynamic, sandbox, physics-based voxel game. It has the potential to be unique in lots of ways and different enough, but with the same amount of creative freedom that Minecraft offers. And it's always those games that blow up the most. The ones that let you just fuck around and create stuff the author never imagined. So I just thought more people should know about this. His videos don't really have a lot of views, so I'll put the link in the description and I encourage you to check it out yourself because I could only fit so much into this video. When I make more boring, <coughs> informative videos like this, it's because I'm interested in something, so I just read up on it and share it with you. It doesn't necessarily mean every piece of info is accurate, but I feel like it at least gives you an idea of the subject. I don't make too many of these, so expect a more regular video next. Like if you enjoyed, leave a comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.